Hello there everybody, Dan Calloway here and uh, today I want to show you a new application that I've been playing around with on my Windows 10 Pro, my Linux system uh, on the network called SyncThing and I use it to uh, synchronize files and folders between devices and it can do multiple devices not just between Windows and Linux. Uh, but I'm in my Windows 10 platform right now and um, I want to uh, talk about sync thing first and then show you how it's done. So let's get into the browser. And uh, let me go over to a folder that I have um, set up on uh, my system here called servers and uh, get into sync thing and then bring up the website itself. And let's take a look at sync thing. Sync thing uh, replaces proprietary sync and cloud services. And it's something that's open, it's trustworthy, decentralized. The data is yours alone, and you deserve to choose where you want to store it. Uh, and if you share it with third parties, then you determine how it's transmitted over the Internet. Uh, it's totally under your control, and I like that. So if you uh, take a look at the website here, and let's get started here. Uh, SyncThing is a native GUI, and it has integrations into not only Windows, but Mac OS. Uh, it's also cross-platform, has a GUI wrapper and it has an Android app as well. Um, SyncThing is currently in uh, its version of uh, 0.14.53, which I've updated on my system. It's available for Linux, 32-bit, 64-bit, ARM, uh, Arch64, many others. It's also available in Windows 32 and 64, FreeBSD 32 64-bit, Solera 64-bit, uh, Dragonfly BSD 64, NetBSD 64, OpenBSD both 32 and 64 bit, Mac OS 32 and 64 bit, and also open source. You can grab that and compile it yourself, 01453. Next version is going to be 54, and that's expected in January 1st. And there all are also versions in Debian and Ubuntu for that. Um, SyncThing is very secure, it's private. Uh, none of your data is ever stored anywhere except on your own computers and shared among those that you know are sharing it. Uh, all your data communications are encrypted between uh, devices using TLS, which is Transport Layer Security, and that's the fourth layer of the OSI model. Um, all devices are authenticated, so every node is identified by a strong cryptographic certificate. I like that too because it's fully protected. It can't eavesdrop. Um, it's an open development product, it's openly developed, it's open source, it uses an open protocol, and let me right click here, we'll go to the website, and I'll show you. Uh, it uses a protocol called Block Exchange version 1, a uh, very secure protocol for communication, okay? Uh, and uh, so let's let close this and go back, and then finally, one thing about SyncThing is it's very easy to use. There's a web uh, GUI or graphical user interface. There's a portable version as well. Uh, it's very simple to set up. You don't need IP addresses or any advanced configuration. It just works over the LAN. And then it's extremely powerful for uh, synchronizing your files and folders. If you want to donate, uh, you can donate to uh, SyncThing as well from their website. And then website uh, Costello is an open source friendly consulting firm that sponsors SyncThing and its development, so it's highly supported as well. Okay, so we're back into uh, the web browser here, and I'm in my Windows 10 platform. Uh, you need to set up SyncThing by launching the script that starts it on both platforms uh, that you want to share, uh, either you know Windows 10. Uh, Windows, uh, Linux, etc. And so let's see, I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the uh, thing here that starts sync thing on Windows 10 and immediately ask me to authenticate to it. I've got a username and password, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then sync thing uh, comes up and it's in the dark theme that I have here. We're on the Windows 10 desktop. You can see that this device is Windows 10 desktop here. Uh, you can see here from the statistics that you can look at the download rate, the RAM utilization. CPU is very low, 2.7%. It's remarkable. Um, it discovers devices on the network, so uh, any 
device that has sync thing installed it'll look at that device and bring it up uh, as a potential sharing device um, the GUI is an HTTPS website at localhost port 8384 and that's how it communicates alright so this is sync thing it's running now on Windows 10 but now I need to get it to run on Linux so I've got uh, a VNC player and which is I'm looking now at the VNC viewer in Windows 10 and I'm going to connect here to GuruBand Linux. I'm going to hit the connect button, put in my password to make the connection to the server that's running on GuruBand Linux. I'm going to click OK. Uh, the viewer is what you're controlling from. The server is where you're being you're controlling. All right, so I'm going to click OK. So now I'm actually in GuruBand Linux, and I did this so that it'd be easy to go back and forth. I'm going to prove that I'm in Guruman Linux. I'm going to do a uname a here, and you can see there it is Linux Guruman Linux 419.4 1. All right, so now we need to start sync thing on the Linux side, uh, on the Linux machine, and there's a script that I have an alias assigned to. It's called sync thing, so I'm going to go ahead and type sync thing here, and then hit the enter key, and it's going to run that script. It's going to start sync thing in the Linux box. Okay, it's going to open up the web browser and it's going to go out to the local host at port 8384, and it'll connect to it. And there it is. All right. So right now it says unknown device. We'll give it a few seconds. It's going to come up and say that it's uh, Guruman Linux, and there it is. All right. So uh, we're in Guruman Linux now uh, in sync thing. This is the device here. Uh, and the same statistics apply, same version, except this is a Linux 64-bit version of SyncThing running. So now we've got SyncThing running between Windows 10 platform and Linux. The next thing we need to do here is we need to uh, add the remote devices so that SyncThing knows what it's syncing to. So I'm going to click on the Add Remote Device here, and it opens up this interface to add the device. This little uh, link here is the Windows 10 platform. I'm going to go ahead and save it and it's got the nondescript here in the remote device but I'm going to expand it here go down the, the IP addresses I know it to be Windows 10 and I'm going to put in the device Windows 10 desktop so Win 10 desktop and then I'm going to click the save button here all right, and so now it's been changed to something we recognize, Win 10 Desktop. So now let's go out to the Windows platform, and it says Device Guruman Linux wants to connect. Add the device, yes. I'm going to click Add Device. Uh, it says Guruman Linux, uh, and then I'm going to, and that's the uh, um, certificate there, device ID. Click Save. And now Guruman Linux is added here in the Windows 10 desktop as a remote device syncing with the Windows 10 desktop platform. All right, so let me uh, go back out here and get back into Guruman Linux. All right, the directory that I want to share with the Windows 10 desktop platform is my documents directory. All right, so to do that, um, let me go ahead and expand that back. I'm going to click on the Add Folder button here uh, in sync thing uh, while I'm in the Guruman Linux platform uh, and I'm going to share the documents directory with uh, the Windows 10 platform okay so let's go ahead and click that add folder and then the folder I want to share is the documents folder here in Guruman you can see it's got three folders and a bunch of files in it and so let me go ahead and close that interface so let's click the add folder button and this is the uh, folder ID. Uh, it's got the folder ID next to it here at the extension, but I want to change it to the actual folder name, which is documents. That's the directory. Home Data Pioneer Documents is the directory. And then I want to give this folder a label, which I'm going to call Documents Directory on Goroman Linux, so that we recognize what it is. All right. I'm going to click Save. All right. So there's the folder. And it's immediately starting to scan that folder, uh, sync thing is, so that it can sync it with Windows 10. I'm going to go back into it though first and click Edit here and go to the Sharing tab. 
and I'm going to tell it to share it with Windows 10 desktop by ticking that box and then I'm going to go up to the uh, well after I click save I'm going to go back in again to the edit and I'm going to do what's called file versioning all right and there's no file versioning currently set up I'm going to click the down arrow and do simple file file versioning and I want to tell it to keep two versions of every file that's in the sharing process here all right so if they're deleted it'll keep two two copies of it all right so that I selected that clicked OK and so now let's go back to the Windows platform again and it says a new folder Guruman Linux wants to share a folder documents directory on Guruman Linux add the new folder yes so let's click add and let's click the sharing tab and we see that it's already ticked let's click the file versioning and let's also select simple file versioning and down arrow there and select two two copies and save so we've got two copies being saved on both both ends alright so now we've effectively set up the sharing of my documents directory in Linux with the Windows 10 platform alright so let's um, open that up again let me hit the rescan to make sure that it's scanned it says it's up to date so it probably is so that means the synchronization is pretty much completed might take a little while let's get into file explorer and come down file explorer here and you should see a folder there it is there's a folder called documents directory on Guruman Linux let me click it and well first thing I want to do before I click open opening it up let's pin that to the quick access area so that I can get to it easily so let's open it up and it looks like it's copied the folders over but it hasn't completed the files yet Oh, there they come okay so now it's completing the copy and it looks like it now is completed so everything you saw in the Guruman Linux is now in Windows 10 platform in File Explorer okay alright so let's get back into the uh, folder again on the uh, Linux side so let me go back over let's open that up again and come down to File Explorer uh, and open that up to show you uh, that the contents match the contents we saw in Windows 10. So here's the documents folder. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And yes, those are the three folders and the, the files that you saw come up in File Explorer in Windows 10. All right, so let's go back out again uh, to File Explorer and let's look at that one more time. Let's come up to um, Quick Access and open that up and see there they're, they're identical. All right. So while I'm in Guruman Linux, let me go ahead and right click and create a new empty file. And I'm going to call this new file one dot text. Let me click OK. All right. And then uh, let me go ahead and right click on that new file and open it. And let me just type something in there to put some content in there. And I'm just going to type in this is a new file. OK. Let's go ahead and save the contents, let's save the file and let's close the uh, the folder and now we have a new file called new file one dot text alright let's go back out to Windows 10 and see if sync thing replicated that into uh, the folder there there we go there's the new file one dot text showing up alright automatically and so let's uh, right click on it open it and there it is this is a new file that was the contents I added in Linux right so we are on the Windows 10 platform now let's go the other way let me right click here in File Explorer in this folder and let me create a new text file alright so let's do a right click new uh, text document let's call that new file 2 dot text and then let me uh, open it up and let me type in something so we have content here this is also a new file on the Windows 10 platform or Windows platform. And let me go back in here and add something else being shared in Guruman Linux. Okay, let's go ahead and save that content by saving the file. So do a file save and then close the file. And so we now have new file 2.txt here in Windows. Let's go back out to Linux. Let's open that up. And let's go down to the folder and open up the documents folder uh, to see if that got replicated to the documents folder. 
And sure enough, there it is, new file 2.txt. Let's open it up to confirm. Right, this is also a new file in Windows platform being shared in Google and Linux, so it works. All right, so we've got automatic file sharing taking place between my Windows 10 platform and my Linux platform. Now let's do something else. Let me go ahead and delete new file one. So let's move that to trash on the Linux platform so that now it's gone from the documents folder. Let me close it. Let's see if it disappeared now from File Explorer on the Windows platform, which it should if it syncs, okay? So let's go back over to File Explorer and open, and sure enough, new file onetxt is gone. So that means that sync thing pro appropriately synced the two folders. And if you click on the ST versions, you can see that the new file one has been saved in two versions here, a minute apart timestamp is one minute apart. So that means you could recover that file if you wanted to because you told it to save it even though you deleted it. Okay, so uh, looks like it was successful. Um, this is SyncThing. Uh, it is a program uh, that allows you to sync uh, items, folders, and files between devices. You can do up to five devices on your network. Uh, I'm only doing two but it's a great product. I highly recommend you grab it and set it up yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.